Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is April 10th, um, 2013. I jumped like that because I didn't realize it was that late in April already. Anyway, hi. Um, <laughs> welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. And David Leutz and Monica and uh, friends from I IDEA, um, which you guys will break out and tell us more about, um, are going to hang out and talk to us and talk to each other about a conference that's coming up in August. Um, the International, uh, tell, tell me what it is, IDEC, International Democratic Education Conference, um, which yeah. is going to be held in Boulder. And in some of my communications, I misspelled some things. It was very late last night when I get that up. Anyway, um, I do know how to spell Boulder. Um, at any rate, the... Um, the, uh, it'll be great to find out about this and, and find out about um, the work of the three of you in general, too, around all of this uh, democratic education business. Do you, um, Monica, do you want to introduce your friends here? I mean, we know David a little bit, but uh, let's go that way. <laughs> sure, I'm going to have them, though. Darcy, if you Good. wouldn't mind just jumping in. and I don't know between the two of you who has the most background with idea. <laughs> Do you I, guys? That would be David. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know the, <laughs> Yeah, I was one of the founding founding class of um, organizers, um, which is now almost uh, it's two and a half years through almost three years ago. Well, maybe it's so, three. I don't know. Like idea that. is only three years old. Yes, it's very it's very yeah. new. Actually, yeah. it's three years three years ago March. It was kind of. Uh, came out in public as an organization, and then it wasn't until September of that year that um, the first organizers joined. So, and I was one of those first organizers. At that time, we only had nine, and now we have 87 um, that span everywhere from Oregon to Puerto Rico to New York to uh, California, all over the place. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so anyway. The, D David, I know I know this might be familiar to some yeah. people listening, but others it's not. So, it's it's a tell more about the a little more about the history and and the purpose and what's this organization about, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, um, about now about four years ago or so, um, a bunch of uh, educators had been going to conferences where they get really inspired, but they would go back to their um, homes and the, the, the magic would wear off after not too long. And so they said, we need to do something that's different, something that actually has, that takes that energy and, and actually uses it to create change. Um, and so they started kind of a think think group around that idea. And idea kind of was kind of the, um, was what came out of that um, after a while of um, organizing together and so idea was born three years ago around the idea of democratic education um, and democratic education meaning um, education for democracy um, education that treats all voices as if they matter um, and I could read the official um, motto yeah. of idea but yeah, if you have it handy go ahead yeah. yeah let me see if I can find it but the the main idea of idea is mm -hmm. that there was there's some missing uh, pieces in in transformational work that was going on um, in small pockets, and one of the main ones is a group that connects all the all the small smaller groups to, into a national um, voice. And so, idea found thought really early on in their uh, in the history that there needs to be a group that helps to organize all the um, local efforts to do change. That there's a lot of great things going on in education um, locally, but they're never, they never get their stories told nationally. And there's a lot of stuff nationally that's happening that's good, but it never makes its way down to the local level. And there's a, there's a missing gap in there. And so IDEA is trying, has been trying to be the bridge of those two um, planes of uh, change. That's kind of the kind of the short story version of it. Um, mm -hmm. And and the work the work around um, a year at Mission 
Hill is yes. is one good example of that. Yes, yes. So this year we've, um, with the uh, year at Mission Hill, we've decided that one of the great ways to show what's working in education is to showcase a school that a public school that is doing that work. So, um, but also we wanted to do something that that not only showcased the school, but then also started a conversation for other people doing this work. So there's we have so a lot of the partners that are coming in to um, add to the conversation. Um, are bringing their own lens to this story here at Missing Hill to um, to create a larger narrative, and that was another thing that Idea wanted to do, which is to create a different narrative about what education can be and is already in the United States, and not about testing, not about uh, failing schools, not about teacher unions, but what we actually want, what our vision is for. Um, education. So I think Darcy could add or Monica can add um, their own ideas, but that's kind of my take. Um, so just one thing, here's here's the one line um, vision of IDEA. IDEA envisions a world where all young people are engaged in learning that nourish nourishes vibrant democratic communities. So all our work is to that end um, in one way or another. Oh. Thanks, David. Do you want to jump in there, Darcy? Um, sure, I could add my two cents, but I, I think what you've chatted in the sidebar is um, really powerful and really um, succinct. It's um, the not one kind of philosophy, not one kind of program or pedagogy, but um, a framework and a way of looking at the whole conversation and including everyone. And, and I think a buzz mine is putting the public back in public education, and, and that's what it's about: empowering students, empowering teachers, empowering families and communities to do what is meaningful for them. Why don't you tell a little bit about your back history, your how you got involved, and tell us people who don't know you who you are, where you're from. My own. This is your first time on TTT, so welcome. It is, yeah. Exciting. Um, I am the Oregon Senior Fellow for IDEA. Uh, I've been with IDEA for two years. Um, I met Scott and Dana, uh, two of our directors, two years ago in January. And I was in my first residency at Goddard College. And these two guys came in and they started talking about this powerful, positive um, movement in education and, and talking about making things relevant for people and about empowering students and families and teachers to have a voice and talked about the really good things that are happening because good things are happening in places and so often we get stuck in the trenches and it's really exhausting and overwhelming and we don't have time to lift our heads up and see the really good things that are happening and I was just I was blown away by their um, by their positive attitude and, and by their energy and um, just knew I had to be involved. So six months later I applied for the internship and I, um, I was awarded an internship with them and I spent a year as an intern. Um, and then I applied for a senior fellow position and I got that. So um, my second year, I love it. I will be involved with this work as long as I can be. Um, I have a master's degree in sustainability education from Portland State University and just finished my second master's with Goddard College and a license to teach English. So, And I'm applying for a doctorate program with ANYOC in leadership and change. So I'm awaiting word on that. So that, those are some pretty cool words. What's sustainability yeah. education? <laughs> uh, sustainability, well, there... Um, I got into sustainability education because of the focus on social justice issues. Uh, I was not, the program was going through some changes at the time and so it, I wasn't able to find as much wealth there as I wanted um, in terms of social justice, but um, in sustainability you're looking at economic sustainability, environmental sustainability, social sustainability. Um, so you have to have all those three pillars in order for a society to move forward and to not collapse. Um, and I, I think those are some of the struggles that we're having right now. So lots of systems thinking, lots of um, big picture, big 
world global things, and then also really place-based stuff. Um, we we studied a lot of place-based education, so um, it's it's being able to view both pieces and hold both um, conversations at the same time. And I think that's something Idea does really well with the organizing structure that we have. We have local people doing local work, and we also have a sort of um, national landscape lens, and also a couple of feet out in the big world also, so, which IDEC is a part of. Uh, feet out in the big world, what do you mean? Yeah, uh, well, the, um, we are involved with the International Democratic Education Conference coming up. Mm -hmm. We were a big part of it. Um, well, the team was, I watched from afar in Puerto Rico last year, um, and then this year we're a part of the organizing um, team for the conference this year in Boulder. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. Cool, cool. Yeah, and I actually just got an um, email yesterday from an organization in Australia who's interested in our work, so that's kind of cool. So, yeah, there's a global aspect to that as well. So I want to get into IDEC. I, I, I want to ask a little more about um, IDEA, though, IDEA. Um, and, and there is a national office, is there? And where's that located? And how, like, where's the funding coming from? Like, if you have directors and internships and all that, there's, like, there's a, a, a infrastructure, which is really interesting. I'm curious yeah. what that, well, uh, how that are, got set up so quickly. We're, well, a lot of energy, for one thing. We're waiting mm -hmm. on um, the keys to our brand new office in Portland, Oregon. Um, mm -hmm. We uh, Before we were located sort of abstractly, but sort of in New York, and that's because that's where our directors were from. Um, Dana mm -hmm. was there at the time. He's now in Minnesota. Um, so, yeah, the, well, the funding, the original funding came from uh, a startup grant from the Bay and Paul Foundation in Vermont. Um, and so that we're, we're pretty careful about who we entertain, and David and Monica can contribute to this as well, but we're pretty careful about who we engage in funding with. Um, because once you start relying on, on grant funding, then you are beholden to fulfill those grant obligations. And um, it, it, it takes a little bit of autonomy away. And so we're really aware of that. And, um, and we will walk away from an offer if it, if it feels like there are going to be um, requirements that don't fit our mission and our values. Um, <laughs> Our values are really important to us, and, and that has to be our very core of what we do in order to um, serve the people in the communities that, that we serve. Because um, it's all about individuals having a voice and having a say. And and when you start becoming um, beholden to funders, that that can change. So uh, we're moving towards, hopefully, moving towards. Um, Professional development opportunities, earned income opportunities that will be able to, um, for us to provide a service to people. Uh, professional development is a really powerful thing that we're doing. That the teachers that are involved in our tours are finding that to be incredible learning opportunities. And so um, we're having conversations with, with different people across the nation about how we can do that better. Uh, and, and we're only three years old, so we're still learning, and we're still yeah, open yeah. to like those conversations for sure. I, I would also, I was gonna say, I would also add that um, we're funded really by the kind of heart and passion of most of the organizers. Um, mm -hmm. Really, uh, just to be open, honest, which idea is really open, honest about our finances and everything, um, which is one of the reasons I like them. The first year, I made a thousand dollar stipend for uh, 10 to 15 hours a week of, you know, um, work that I was supposed to be doing, you know, doing on behalf of IDEA. And, and that has ri risen to $2,000, um, you know, as the years have came, went on and we they've got a little bit more funding, but most of the work is funded by our own heart and passion. And it's, for a lot of um, organizers, their work with IDEA is, in some way, it's an extra thing. It's some, a lot of their work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis is their is their main um, job and income, and IDEA is in support of that, and their work on the local levels is is in support of IDEA. So, 
um, idea has really re trying to rethink how organizations work and how we how funding works and so right now it's still a you know foundation um, in based one but there's always been this open conversation about like what does it mean to always be um, beholden to these foundations and to funding cycles and to um, people leaving you know tops allies yeah, leaving foundations and they were your key person and then you don't have that money anymore so um, it's been an open question like how do we do this and we last do we do we do fundraisers you know it's it's still um, a lot of people working for a little money little money but you know it's it's about the work um, as I would hmm. say is the model the, the motto at this point well and, and speaking to that last year we had a um, a campaign a funding campaign and we came up a little bit short and so everyone who had been stipend in um, which like David said it was minimal amount of money but donated all of that back um, so most of the years um, what is actually allotted to, to stipend our organizers is given back. So I know a lot of organizers this year have given their stipend back. Um, as an intern last year, there was no funding with that. <laughs> it, it was all just mm -hmm. passion. So and th that's pretty common in the people that that work with us. So. Well, I appreciate well, your frankness and all that. And and I, th I, I think it does have um, impact on who can be an organizer, you know? Um, so, yeah. you know, it's a certain group of us who have the spare time to to offer an organization like that. So I think, yeah, it's a good good conversation to keep having um, mm -hmm. around all this. The, um, what, what did the two of you, Darcy and David, do day to day? I <laughs> am I'm, I'm a high school English teacher, so. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I teach, and then when I'm not teaching, uh, I'm studying, working for idea. It's just what I do. Um, yeah. I, in every what, conversation. What, tell us about your your high school English class. Do you what do you love to teach the most? Or creative what writing. Do you, what do your uh -huh. creative cool. writing? Uh, the reason I became an English teacher uh, was to empower kids with a voice, teach them how to be respectfully um, powerful, and and speak their truth in a way that people will listen. Um, I don't think we teach kids how to do that very well. Um, and so, so that's that's my big thing. I, I think they have important things to say, and um, I see it as my job to guide them and how to do that so that they're here and heard, and, and to give them back the power that um, oftentimes I think has been taken away. Very cool. And David, you laughed when I said that. Why? Yeah, well, because I was just thinking, I um, every episode of Teacher, Teacher, Teachers oh, has, you get to show, say? has showcased one of my many things that I do to day to day basis. <laughs> that I so, you're a co-host. You didn't know that. I... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, um, I work. Um, my my day job is I work as an assistant teacher at a um, as a as first grade assistant teacher. Um, then my my passion jobs are I work um, I'm the seed steward of Imagining Learning, which is a, a student voice um, organization um, created, which we've had a show on teachers, season teachers. Also, um, I'm I help uh, edit the um, Cooperative Catalyst uh, teacher blog, and what else do I do? I work with Idea, um, and I'm I I just my main goal in life is to help. Uh, creative people connect with each other to do awesome work so it's kind of all my work has kind of um, been around that so that's so cool thank you um, for that but uh, t t you work with first graders that's neat they're like seven-year-olds yeah <laughs> I do uh, some are six some are seven some are eight <laughs> we, have, we have quite a range in our class so what are you learning from kids that age Oh, actually, we're doing a really amazing kind of a project-based thing that started out from seeds from some of their play. Um, we're creating this. They created this whole um, ecosystem world with imaginary world that, um, and we have now just created a big 3D version of it that they helped build. And so, what we're actually learning, we were trying to talk about this today. Me and the, my co-teacher were talking about uh, what they really have learned is how to work together 
and cooperate and co-create spaces uh, together. And they're because they're they first graders are natural builders. They love to create things and build things, and so, so this has kind of been a product of that. But on top of that, uh, what we've seen as teachers is that it's really about how to co-op to do that as a community or in. Um, and it's not always, you know, pleasant. There's a lot of sometimes tears and anger and um, drama. But over the course of the last two months, this this project has kind of just taken shape, and it's it's been really fun. Actually, it's I I I, w I don't want to leave school when I when I have to leave. And it's been it's been fun the last couple the last couple weeks. Yeah. Cool. So, anyway, uh, thank you for the, all those introductions. I, I just like to, you know, a big part of what TTT is, is like you just said, it's about connecting and getting to know each other, I think. So, but one of the things we wanted to do tonight was talk about the conference that's coming up in August. So, Monica, do you want to take over when, and describe that a little bit? And then you guys are all three on the conference committee, I assume? Is that... Well, in... In certain ways, I think you, Darcy's still muted. I, I, I think she's unmuted now. Yeah, she's unmuted now. Did you start to say something, Darcy? Oh, you. Were, I'm sorry. You're still muted, Darcy. You have to unmute. <coughs> Try again, Darcy. Oh. Now I can't hear Darcy. I'll I'll dive yeah. in and. Okay. Interrupt me if you get it working, Darcy. Um, you know, being a newbie, what I'd like to share is just my take on idea and idea. Um, I kind of my feel, um, my love for both um, have to do with kind of the last letter in the acronym for each. Mm -hmm. um, for idea, the A. To me, it really represents, rather than for America, um, it represents and. And you guys talked about it beautifully in your intros, but that's what drew me to the whole group, is that it, it wasn't this way or that way. It's an and, you know. And then the beauty that I got the privilege to go hang out with you guys in Vermont, um, well, what happens when it's and? Well, there's, you have to deal with the and. You know, and to be in a space where you, you feel comfortable enough to have disagreements and diversity because you know that you all agreed with the and, you know. So to me that's just overwhelmingly um, calming and I think that's what our future is headed towards. So I love that. And then for IDEC, um, the C stands for conference, but to me it's really conversation. Um, and that's what these guys are teaching me about um, Jisha, who's kind of heading up, well, she is heading up a deck. Um, one of the things that she said is, how do, we, how do we go about this conference so that the conversation starts now um, and it continues after, and that those four days, or the fourth through the eighth in August, they're simply us face-to-face -face conversing, you know? Um, so anyway. Mm -hmm. That's my take. I, I am on the committee, but I don't have, I'd rather these guys talked about, um, you know, kind of a, a back history of IDEC, so you guys could get a feel for what it is first. So jump in, guys. And before they do, I just want to identify, in case you're listening to this, that you can find out more about IDEA um, at democraticeducation.org and IDEC at idec2013.org. Go ahead. <laughs> David, did you go to Puerto Rico? Um, I, have not, I have actually not been to an IDEC, um, okay. but I know the history a little bit of IDEC. IDEC um, originally was started in Israel um, by uh, as, a, as a way to um, organize around the idea of do, uh, democratic education or democracy in education or education for human rights. Um, and as as it started to grow, I think it's been around for for a while. And as it grow, grew, it um, they started to move it from uh, country to country, for continent to continent. 
Um, and and it, it, each year it takes on the feel of whatever country it's in, because um, the organizers who are in that country are the ones that are responsible for deciding what it looks like. Um, so I know that and it's been going for twenty-one years. Is that right? Is, is that, is that, yeah, yes. I'm, if that's what yeah, if that's what it says. So I'm, um, okay, yeah. Yeah, and well, idea actually was born out of IDEC um, because um, some of those original organizers who I was talking about, they went to IDEC um, when it was in, I think Dana, who is one of the founding members of IDEC, I mean, IDEA, um, helped organize the last time it was in the United States when it was in New York City. And it was such a powerful experience for them that they wanted to. Uh, to try to make it live on. And the Aero Conference, which is another um, education conference that happens every year, was born out of um, people in the United States saying we should carry on this idea of IDEC um, every year in America. Um, so, but this is the first year it is back in America since then, I think. Um, last year it was in Puerto Rico. Um, That's America, by the way. It is America, by the way, but there's. <laughs> It was strong. it was definitely Puerto Puerto Rico and not the United uh -huh. States. Um, it made a, a big it was a big difference um, for them. And so this year, um, a lot of us at Idea has really talked about how can a conference led by Idea really bring together as many voices as um, as we want. Because uh, what happens in a lot of the um, some of the alternative, or just almost every conference that happens, educational conference happens, they, they end up being very niche for the people who, uh, the title, uh, you know, if it's, if it's the alternative education conference, it's for alternative educators. If it's for tech educators, it's just the tech people that come, you know. And so IDEC, at least this is my idea of what IDEC is going to be from what I've heard, Jaisha and Monica, is that this is a conference where all those um, other, all those group, niche groups, converge into one place, and all those conversations will happen in one place. And so it won't just be educators; even it will be people who are social justice, who are community organizers, who um, are doing stuff on a community level or stuff on the national level. So um, that's what has drawn me, got me excited about what can happen um, at IDEC this year. And I think that falls back on what Darcy brought up about, you know, the, what, what does public mean? Public means concerning all the people, you know. So that's the and of, you know, your people, mostly. Mm -hmm. so Darcy, did you want to add any insight you have on the conferences? Um, Maybe stories you've heard or... Um, stories I've heard. Um, wow. I, I wish I... I wish I had a story. I, I unfortunately missed the Puerto Rico conference. I think the year before that it was in England. Um, I know the, in 2014 it's going to be in Seoul, South Korea. Um, so there's sort of an effort to make it on not only a different country but a different continent um, every year. I know last year being Puerto Rico and this year being the U.S. is back-to-back. Um, is, is -back. So I know that they're pushing pretty hard to, to not have that happen. Um, but, gosh. Mm -hmm. I, re I really don't. I wish I did have stories. I wish we had someone here that had been. Um, <laughs> well, I'll, that I'll, other. They'll, they'll, come, they'll come to the next conversation. But go ahead. Yeah, right. And I'll jump in with um, what David was talking about, Yakov Hecht. Um, yes. That's another thing that really, you know, just – drew me in, just sucked me right into the whole thing is um, Yaakov Hecht has been doing education cities in Israel, you know, for 10 years. And that was the big launch in Puerto Rico. Um, and that's, as you guys know, a lot of what we've been um, experimenting with. Um, I met Isaac when he was working um, at the Patrick School, which is maybe an hour away from where I live. And, you know, after we talked for a while, he said, do you, do you know of Yaakov Hecht? And he said, you should really read his book, Democratic Education. And it just blew me away. I went and parts of it, you know, because we'd experienced a lot of the same things. Um, and Yaakov's latest talk, and I wish I had the link handy, but he, he's just, you know, he gets the whole 
and in public. And um, so that that was my first take on listening to conversations from you know, that IDEC and finding out about Yakov and his work. I don't know if that spurs anything for you guys to jump in and talk about. Uh, I've got a question probably tucked in here somewhere. Um, one of the things you notice uh, about a lot of the uh, activities and, and um, philosophy of your group is, you know, the, the idea of democratic, right? I mean, it's clearly in the name, but I just think of all the different ways I'm seeing the plurality of voices in what you're doing. So there's like, you know, a conference on different continents each year. Um, there's this Fundly project, which was, you know, Chad yes. asked about it in the chat yes. room about, um, you know, the funding that took place for a certain project was kind of crowdsourced. Uh, and then there's this idea that probably Darcy can talk about a little bit, and that's the Oregon tour that's coming mm -hmm. up. So this education conference, I don't know if that's the right word, but basically is taking place on different sites. And so, you know, one of the themes that kind of pervades seems to be like this plurality of voices. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that in those, you know, those manifestations I was just talking about. I can speak a little bit to the Oregon tour. Um, I know there were questions, and I'm trying to like manage, ma monitor the chat conversation and move back and forth, and my computer's freezing up, so I apologize. <laughs> and anybody in that chat who wants to join us right here, they can just click the link, by the way. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Um, so uh, yeah, there there were conversations going on in the chat box about what does it mean to have young people involved. What do we mean by that? Um, we have one of our board members, um, incredible young lady, is 19. She's on our board of directors. She like contributes powerfully to that conversation. Uh, I believe it's 14 of our 84. David said 87 organizers nationwide are under the age of 21. Um, so in, in, in our work in organizing um, this upcoming tour, we're talking to Multnomah Youth Commission members who are um, a really powerful board of young, actually, uh, county commissioner level people that are um, age 17 to 21 in the Portland metropolitan region. Um, so we're talking with them about how they can partner with us in our in our next tour, and they're wanting to be a part of this one. So, um, it, in a lot of ways, it, it's sort of organic, and it happens. Um, you you just start talking with community members and, and what's important to them, and it sort of morphs uh, into something I think beyond what we imagined it to be. So, um, so so it's sort of like riding a, a wild horse and <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> one, of, one of the first initiatives um, of IDEA, the first year when we only had nine organizers, and um, originally my organizing area was something like nine states, and it was almost um, ridiculous to think that we were going to actually cover nine states. But the first thing that I did was was told to just go out and listen for the whole year. My my only task that was asked of me was to go and listen, um, and what that meant was um, Scott Nine, who is the executive director, gave us the prompt of like ask people if they had you know a hundred million dollars and they could they could they could give it to any organization in their community or give it to or put it anywhere or fund anything. What what would they do? And that kind of started the conversation um, with people. And so I, my, I was tasked to go talk to parents, go talk to young people, to go talk to school leaders, um, to find out what was going on interesting in my community. And my, my first year really just spent the whole time just looking at what was going on in Oregon. And I found so much exciting things and and I would have a conversation and I'd ask them who are two or three people I should talk to that you think and they and I would go talk to those three people and those three people would give me three people and so it was this we were trying to almost create a map of what was going on and by mapping our own local communities we could get a real sense of all the different voices that were out there and then use that to um, 
use that to re uh, rethink about our own work as organizers and uh, about what we what we want to put our energy behind. Um, and like Darcy said, uh, the idea the Oregon tour was one of those things that came out of that those those conversations was this idea that there's a lot of great schools that could share powerful things that are happening in schools right now and but teachers and parents and students don't get a chance to go visit those schools um, and so in a real learning context and so the tour was born out of that idea that you can take 20 to 30 people and go visit four schools over the course of two days and really have a deep learning experience with them and that they can go take those that learning that they learned back to their community and have it be a seed for their own organizing. Um, so, so really think, cool ideas. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think one of the the things I'm most excited about in our upcoming tour, um, it's a little bit like what happened in Vermont last fall. On uh, Thursday evening, May second, we're having an open sort of rotating fishbowl, evolving fishbowl conversation where we'll start out with five or six people in the center of a fishbowl, and and begin the conversation about what education looks like in Oregon right now and what it could look like. And um, we have we've had people step up. Um, there's about a hundred people that have been involved. Um, education union members in the Eugene area that have been involved in some pretty powerful conversations and conferences in the last um, month or two and they've expressed interest and then there's another 300 plus people that have been contacted who were in a diversity conference um, two months ago maybe not quite two months ago um, so and then and then young people from the Multnomah Youth Commission uh, have expressed interest in coming down and being a part of that and uh, a powerful woman and some of her people from the Portland Parent Union who are doing a lot of work in terms of restorative justice and um, disproportionate discipline that's happening right now, um, the school to prison pipeline thing. Uh, so they're going to be joining us. Uh, and then we have college professors and invitations out to um, some of the members of the governor's education cabinet and uh, and, and people that are involved in this in the city and county government as well. So um, it's pretty exciting. And um, and if they all show up, <laughs> it's going to be quite a night. So I'm excited. I'm really really excited about it. But um, sometimes when you when you are working in a democracy, it can be messy, and that's okay. And I think that's one of the things I love most about Scott and Dana is that it's not we're not afraid to get messy. Um, and that's one of the things I'm learning the most. I think about being a leader is that um, I'm, I often am afraid of making a mistake as a leader and um, Scott and Dana and um, the people that I work with at IDEA are allowing me to grow into that not being afraid of making a mess and you know I'm going back to kindergarten and just playing and trying and trying something else until it all you know until you figure it out and uh, working with your friends and, and hanging out and and, and that's what learning is about and I think we've, we've taken that away from education and I, I think that's why I'm so passionate about the work that IDEA does. That mess, go ahead. Monica. I threw a couple links in there. Um, the first one um, ha is on Scott, um, but the first video that's on there is a video I hadn't seen you guys. Um, Scott um, is narrating it, but it's about Diego. Um, and I think he's 15. Um, he wow. might be even younger than that. Um, but he's an organizer for IDEA. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second one was Aaron, who recently has tested um, 50 adults in Providence, Rhode Island. And um, obviously, that's another huge intrigue for me. That it's not. It's not. It is this rhizomatic. We're we're all people. It's it all ages, the and is all ages, and that they're not just tokens, they're actually doing the work. Um, Jonathan recently went with Beth to Harvard to share the work that they're doing. Um, and like you you mentioned too, um, Chris, it's, it's like all over, it's, you know, it's, we've got the zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in thing going on. So. I was going to ask if there, when, in those messy meetings that you were describing, Darcy, is there an organizing principle? Like, how do you how do you get a conversation happen? 
in those meetings. In, and, in that, and, and, and I asked that in in with trying to get back to IDEC as well a little sure. bit. Um, sure. In, in thinking about it, are some of those principles going to be at that conference? So, um, yeah. Sure, yeah. Well, um, IDEC is, is going to be messy as well. Um, in terms of our own conversation, uh, we'll see that, that first fishbowl and Scott will facilitate. Scott's a really um, gifted facilitator in terms of keeping the conversation going and keeping it focused. But um, but having having it start and then grow organically, it it's got to be a little like um, you got to let it go a little bit. And Scott's really good at doing that, um, finding that that pathway between complete chaos and and completely controlled, and so it has a room to grow and, and kind of become what it's going to become based on the people that are in the room. And I'm just trusting that the right people will be there in the conversation, and, and trusting that, that that will be appropriate at that time. Um, IDEC is being organized loosely in the same way. Um, it's I think they call it your conference, your design, or some something like that. David might be able to speak better to me exactly what those words are, but Basically, it, it, it people from, well Goddard College, for example, we have a couple of van loads of people that are organizing that are going to come and talk about what it means to be self-directed learners um, at the college level and and what it means to to do the work that we do uh, in that. And then we have uh, people from the Patchwork School that are coming. Um, we have people that are going to be earning. Um, professional development credits and college credits towards their teaching certificate for doing early child care, actual child care at the conference. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a call for workshops out right now. Just people are being asked to bring their own learning and bring those conversations. And rather than having um, keynote speakers, we have several different what we call coffee talks. So there will be different tents focused on different uh, partners, different areas. We call them boundary partners. Um, that's a international healthcare organization terminology, but it's it's the people, um, whether it's parents or educators or young people or the different sort of loosely defined groups of people um, and areas of movement. Like I'm not saying this right. Those those tipping points that you look at. Um, so we'll have conversations that are focused around that, whether they're located in different tents or different corners or different um, around different tables. Uh, rather than having a keynote speaker, we're going to have people having those conversations. Um, so it's going to be a lot more informal and a lot more about who shows up. Sort of the open forum, open space, type of open space sort of um, conference. Unconference. <laughs> Actually, quite, quite a bit of that. Um, starting starting now, when as people register, um, trying to get like maybe even one word that is their you know passion right now. They could change it if they wanted. Um, but like if they were there today, what would they want to be talking about? And trying to get the feel starting now of we can change our mind every day and decide what we want to talk about today and there's enough people that want to talk about that too you know so the messiness of the August 4th through 8th is going to be um, there is a, a light schedule you know there's the, the time is scheduled but you can also at any point in time do your own thing there's adventure hikes you know um, and it could just be I'm, de I'm deciding what I'm going to do this hour or now there's enough of us that have talked about equity, or there's enough of us that have talked about, um, you know, um, play. And so we're getting, now the group has organized for us a space, you know, kind of the, the idea of ed education cities. We're going to try to play that out during the conference, mm -hmm. you know, that, okay, well, maybe to, what happened today completely changes what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I see. I, I need to ask you to break down education cities a little bit. That, I, I think I know what you're saying, but yeah. What do you mean? Um, well, it's very similar to, you know, what I always talk about, um, city as school. Uh -huh. So, you know, the whole idea of, I guess, an unschooling mentality. 
that life is rich enough and full enough and learning is natural enough that what if we just lived, you know, what if we lived in perpetual beta and rolled with the punches, lived in the vulnerability of context. Um, but the education yeah. cities in terms of like what Yaka Peck, who was one of the first people to like kind of talk about that in a more front of formal way, is what they do in Israel is they, each city has a different version of it, but what they do is they think of the whole city as as the school and so how they organize their spaces and how they t think about you know museum spaces and informal spaces and classroom spaces um, as learning and the interconnection of that so it's not I kind of think of it as like a permaculture idea where you know that everything kind of helps to feed the other thing like right now we have schools and we have museums and we have libraries and we have informal spaces and they're all kind of separate on their own little island and for me education cities get rid of all those islands and build bridges to all of them and interconnection and bridges over things and back and forth and makes it a web so that you don't think of learning as just happening in a school but you think about it happening in the whole city and how can you design your city and design your learning to um, make that reality Strongest. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying words right and now. David, what was the reference on that? The name again? Yaakov Hex wrote a book called uh, Democratic Education: The Story of called the Story of Learning. Um, Good. Can, like, I'm, I can put a link into uh, in somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So l let me um, let me uh, again push back a little bit on that. Then, so if if learning is everywhere all the time, why have a conference, right? Um, so. So, I, 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 which I think is not just a rhetorical question. I, right. I think I think it's an important question. Um, and and I wanted to reference Chris Lehman, who runs, who's now run for five years. I think it's been five years. Educon in Philly, right? Mm -hmm. um, and um, he argues that there are ways of having workshops and doing conferences that are not totally unconference. That, that need structure and that those structures um, encourage conversation from people who might not be the most vocal, most mm -hmm. leap in kind of conversation. So, so to, to think about how to conduct conversations in rich, powerful ways at conferences, I think is not, I think just saying everybody sit at a table and have, have this conversation might not be enough, you know? Why is that enough to come together in Boulder, Colorado? So there's so my I, pushback yeah, on that. Yeah. At least from what I, from the conversations we were having in Detroit when we were kind of um, building on this the last time we idea got together, um, mm -hmm. it's not just that everybody's going to sit down on a table and start having conversations. First off, there's going to be hopefully a few thousand people there. But that the idea so the numbers that, that, matter, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, the organize. I mean, I I think, and this is the only reason I think we should have schools of any sort, be it in a classroom <laughs> or not, is that coming together to learn is always more powerful than, at least for me, in a community, is always more powerful than just one individual with learning by themselves with themselves. I think we're social animals, and so I think that coming together, this and all our different voices coming together is is more powerful than just all of us separate. So in that sense, I think coming together around the idea of IDEC is important. But what I think is the way that they have structured it is it's not just going to be an open, you know, everybody's just hanging out in a room and let's see what happens, is that <laughs> they've structured it in a way that there's there are themes or topics that are the seeds of the conversation and that the coffee talks are supposed to help spark deeper conversations. And so what normally happens at as a conference is you go into a workshop, you usually, someone will lecture at you for 45 minutes about how lecturers aren't the best way to learn, and right. then you'll have about five minutes of like question and answer time, which is usually dictated right, you know, right at the person who's talking to you, and then you kind of walk there and you have a little bit of that banter back and forth, either between at lunch or at you know walking from one workshop to the next and that's usually the most powerful time and so to make a whole conference about that that in between time is I think what the people who are really doing the IDEC planning is are wanting to try they want to experiment with what what happens if we just make that in between time the whole time and we just 
provide little conversations that spark deeper conversations. Am and I might be wrong. Is that, right? Is that right, Monica? Yeah, and I preface it with, again, the and issue. Yeah, some conversations, it's not even just the people, it's the topic garners a different type of conversation, you know, so it's not like it's all going to be one way, it's, it's whatever all the different people, you know, um, decide, but I, I've i been to a few conferences at where people are saying, well, well, here's an example, if you do come together, you've paid a lot of money to get there, It's you've taken mm -hmm. time out to get there, um, and a lot of the things that do go on at conferences, not all the things, and people are getting better at it, but a lot of the things that go on at conferences, you could catch later. You know, if someone's going to talk, you could catch their video later. So to pay that much money and take my time out, I want to hang out with those people, you know, that maybe I've never met face-to-face -face before. You know, to me, that the whole idea of um, the availability for it to be loose enough for you not to feel guilty if, if you're, you know, checking out and going on a hike with 10 people that you really needed to have a conversation with. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm drawn to that, and I'm going to mm -hmm. speak about that, but it's and. It's, it's all the gamuts we want to offer. It's, okay, this is a public space. It's concerning all the people. It's not going to be dogmented to be completely this way or completely that way. It's an and. So it will be messy figuring all that out, which is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, in some ways, it, it it goes back to the original um, idea of, of schools, which were just you know teachers and their students hanging out in the in a public space and having conversations, you know, Socrates' conversations about something, which with the you know with people kind of pressing them to go deeper or think about it a different way or you know, and when you have tons of people, when you don't just have one leader doing that, but you have tons of people who are hopefully empowered to do that and to, you know, to, to be those teachers and learners at the same time, you know, switching back and forth, um, hopefully, the, the idea is that powerful, deep learning is going to happen and not just surface learning. Um, so a bit of the organization that might help people a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. and, knowing though that we were going into it with this down but we want to be open and listening to to change it up whenever um, but there'll be the coffee talks every morning like 30 minutes and, and you can pick and those topics are coming from what some of the people are saying when they register is really on their heart you know um, and then there'll be spaces like um, probably an ongoing maker or hacker space where people are actually sharing you know physical things that they're doing, you know, and have people come in to teach how to recycle things. Um, so there'll be a lot of organized things. It's just that every day you get to choose, you know. So can I ask, uh, who's organizing that makerspace? Is that somebody at um, Colorado University or? Um, right now, um, or is it when, if you want a specific name, a lot of people will be. But right now, I'm talking to, you remember Greg Hill? Um, who has disruptive, um, the disruptive uh -huh. department. Yeah, yeah. He's been doing a lot of hackerspaces and spaces. So he'll be one of the like, experts that's actually experienced that, um, that will be that's, deciding that's an, what the space might look like and then facilitating that. That's another important part about it is that one of the processes that we went through was to think about who should those coffee talkers be? Who should we invite to the conference that will help spark those conversations? Um, and so we've, you know, we've we've gone from everybody, from you know, really famous people who would, you know, the Ken Robinsons of education to, you know, people who like who haven't maybe got on the haven't had their TED talk or haven't had the national um, impact, but are really important people in the community or somebody, you know, like you. I mean, Paul, you. I mean, you're somebody who's doing really great stuff and. And you might be a somebody that we would have said, like, this is a great person to talk about youth voice or talk about, you know, how to share share voices online. I mean, these, and so you would have, you know, what invited you to then be in one of those coffee talks to start the conversation. Just basically, I mean, to me, it's, IDEC is going to be a lot like uh, teachers teaching teachers. I mean, in a lot of ways, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and I th obviously I totally get that, but can I, I want to press, and I did interrupt Monica as you were telling more of the structure, but I want to press the, the makerspace idea a little bit further. And the reason I asked who was organizing that is that somebody coming to, you know, Colorado University in Boulder um, can't just set up a makerspace. That takes some preparation. It takes some, you know, some, some development of materials and kind of thing, right? I mean, is that, is that fair to ask? So that yeah, takes some organization. Yeah. Yeah, they're starting. That's already starting. You know, how how is that going to look? Um, are we going to have one space that's continually just has the resources there where you can drop in whenever, and then maybe a couple of them that are, um, you know, we're imagining a big grid, you know, like the open space, and and so you can see what all is going on, and and that can change according to who signs up to go to those places. But we're imagining people are, you know, a couple different places a day where people are going to want specific maker spaces even. Um, mm -hmm. But also the idea of just an open, what what Greg's been working with a lot is um, you show up, you know, and the resources are there, but there's no instruction. So what do you do with that, you know? And you need to think alone for a while what you even want to make or do, you know? Mm -hmm. So just helping people along with that as well. Um, but again, no no defined, but yeah, they're already working on, you know, what's that going to look like? What are we going to need? We've already gone through a lot of gyrations of from, you know, we're going to do it this way to, no, we probably should do it this way. As, as I said, I think I interrupted you, though, but in a good way. Um, what, what, what are the next structures? Are you, what are you asking me? I, 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 yeah, I think so. You were, I think you were saying that people could go off in a makerspace. So there's the coffee shops, makerspace, then there were more okay, structures. Yeah, there's a theme each day. Um, and so most of the conversations will be geared around that theme. I mean, it could be what you bring into it, what um, Jish has been taking in the registrants, and she's been saying that she's been really surprised that in the question of what what are you passionate about and what are you wanting to see in education, she's been surprised with um, the high amount of people that are simply saying love and empathy, you know. So um, I can't really say what the topics will be about, but each day there'll be a bit of organization about, okay, today let's focus on this. So the, the coffee talkers in the morning will kind of spark us with that conversation and then you might be able to attend a makerspace if that's what you want to do. They'll, maybe there'll be a hike, a two-hour hike that you could be going on. Um, there might be a scavenger hunt, you know, through the city just to to get the feel of what David said is. It's about it's not separate places. Um, then there might be some real typical like workshops going on, you know, for people that you know want to do that. Or there might be just spaces where people that haven't ever met before want to hang out with, ten, you know, the Cooperative Catalyst, we've always talked, and I know they've done it, but I've never been in a part of that, you know, a group that's been together virtually, and now they get to be together face to face. So I guess what we're really hoping to do is go in with our ears, mostly, um, mm -hmm. and start now with our ears, and what do, what do people want, what do they need, um, with the belief that people are good, and if we just facilitate you know, their curiosities and what they need, that's going to be the best for that time that we're together face-to-face. -to -face. Mm -hmm. So, Monica, can, can I say, if, if I were there, what I would want to come up to you and ask, and, and maybe we should just do this sometime um, on a TTT, is, is, is like, um, how did you, how did you, how do I say this? How did you, you work within your district? right so is that a totally unique situation or could you guide other people in understanding how to create spaces of permission and freedom um, within this the uh, regular old school district like is there some information you could share about that does that Definitely. make sense I mean yeah. that and another reason I love idea is I won't get this verbiage right so maybe you guys could help me but um, the whole idea of it's not about idea, it's about you, you know. So what you're, the reason we're interested in you is because what you're already doing, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I see IDEC as it's local. Um, people 
can know more about what we've been doing. You know, we're, we're kind of coming out of the closet. It's perfect timing. Um, yeah, that's that's the whole idea, but not just us. It's it's anybody, you know. It's, mm. it's like the learning tours, and um, so definitely. And welcome, Lacey. Yeah, Lacey. Um, let me introduce Lacey. She is a fellow Goddard College person. Um, she's also working on the on the group of busloads of Goddard people that are are coming to IDEC, and she's been working with Haley Slada um, on that that end of it. So she can speak a little bit to that if she wants to. She's shaking her head now. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to pop in and listen for a minute. <laughs> no, no. Here, I, that's okay. Um, here's, here's, here's. Uh, I have another. I mean, that's fine. There let are. Me, let me just jump in really quick. David said he has to leave, and so I, do you have anything you want to say before you go, David? Thanks so much for being David, here. Can I ask my question before, right before you leave? Which is good. Sorry, which is, which is, if if we had another IDEC um, conversation, um, what would what would that look like? Um, who would you want to you like if we had a few more weeks to organize and make sure people could come? Um, what what would what 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 would the next steps be for? TTT helping to extend this conversation. Is that? That would be super. Well, I, I, go ahead and answer since you have yeah, to leave. Yeah, I, I think that's actually a really exciting possibility. Um, as they said, they, their kind of tagline is let's, let the, let's have the conversation start now. So it might be interesting just to have a teacher teaching teachers where we kind of try to provide that open space for. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of the and voices to, to, to come together and I mean I think it would be great to get Isaac um, who's one of the has been organizing this for quite a while and he's been at multiple IDEX to come but it would also be great to just get some people who we have invited or who have um, already registered to come on and talk about why they want to come and um, what this type of conference means to them or um, to get one of those and voices going. I mean, I really do think that Teachers Teaching Teachers is a really great example of what IDEC will be because, I mean, while we have a topic of IDEC, we've talked about a, quite a few different things today. And, yeah, um, I think so. And, I mean, yeah, same and, with every time I, I've been on here. So, And I'm as gonna, you're going, what, with the three collared or Goddard College, um, it, it, yeah. it does seem to me like you guys got the bug in college, so I'm really interested yeah. in in how that happens. Some I, that, like there seems like another story there too. Yeah, well, yeah. Goddard in, Goddard is a really interesting school in that it is really kind of like an IDEC place too. Is that we it's a you know self directed learning, low residency, and so the low residency part is that we only go to Goddard for nine nine days out of out of a semester. And what ends up happening at those nine days is there's workshops during the day that are geared towards teaching us skills or as classes or around topics. But really where everybody will tell you all the learning happens is at the dinner table and um, at, in the, around the fire pits at the end of the night in the music building. We'll have these insanely deep conversations that people will stay up until two or three in the morning because they don't want to go to bed because they want to because they know that they're not going to be able to these conversations again once they leave. Uh -huh. and so that to me is what I definitely do is that they'll have these conversations that you can't have without these people that are in this room right this second. Right. And and I yeah. think that's important to think about is like there is even though we can really connect on digitally and I love the internet, there's nothing like being in the same room and getting to feel the energy that comes from people when they talk about exciting things. Um, Very good. Yeah, and, and you have to go, David. Um, yeah, thank you. I want to give you way permission Thanks, to go. And anybody else who has, wants to have last thoughts as he's going, go ahead. <laughs> I just want to yeah. throw a specific out there. On Thursdays um, at 9 p.m. Eastern, they've been doing um, a Twitter chat um, for the Mission Hill and so starting a week from this Thursday, every other Thursday will be um, an iDeck chat. 
So maybe some things out of that conversation, because they're getting topics for that, will feed into the TTT. Yeah, so why don't you guys plan a TTT sometime in May, and we'll, okay. we'll figure it out from there. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, the, on, on, on this pitch that uh, it's, we uh, that chat that we do, it's every every week at Thursday from 6 to 9, so same time as the TTT, but on Thursday. Um, and it, it, the hashtag is um, idea ed chat. So it's I D E A E D chat, and you cool. can find us there. And we have really powerful conversations. Tomorrow's conversation will be about a year at Mission Hill, um, about the new episode that's coming out um, tomorrow. But the last last couple of weeks we've had one on alternative alternative assessment tools that where we just had a, a really powerful conversation about if we want to get rid of the test what would we what would we rather have and we've had ones about parents and policy you know pretty important topics so find us very nice thank you uh, so uh, much um, I, I, and and I just uh, want to quickly announce that next week we will be having three folks on from Detroit actually two of them are still from Detroit and one's nice. going to uh, teachers College now um, but um, Amira Sadi mm -hmm. who's the Detroit Future Schools program collect, uh, coordinator and uh, Maya Stovall who's a DFS Detroit Future Schools oh, cool. artist and um, Danielle Phil Piak um, and I think our our theme we're still kind of figuring the theme out which uh, you know is as you can figure out is, is what we do but I think our theme is going to be about this third space artist digital media stuff and how that gets into schools um, and um, so that's uh we'll be uh, Detroit will be in the house next week we were <laughs> me and Darcy were just in Detroit last yeah. a couple months ago uh, mm -hmm. and we met all those those people those, oh, those are, well. yeah Come back so, next week then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Darcy, since you are new to this and any yeah. I see you too, you're welcome anytime. We would love to have yeah. your voice. So if next you. week intrigues you and you're available, join. Yep. Thank you. In any way, fashion you, you'd like to. Um it, it because some of you know that you can just jump into the hangout here or you can um, chat over at edtechtalk.com um, uh, oh. slash TTT. And, and just lurk if you uh, would like to do that too. You're welcome to do that. Um, and, um, and that site is managed by uh, Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier, and um, we want to thank them for all of their support in doing that at edtechtalk.com, um, which is part of the World Bridges Network. Thank you all, and thank we'll you. see you next week. Thank you so much. Or, or tomorrow or sometime soon on the web. <laughs> okay, thank you. Guys. Good Thanks. to see you, Monica and Lacey and David, again. Bye. See you.